Hey, this is Jim Dam Schoener with Portfolio Think Tank. Today, we're going to go through modern portfolio theory. What is it, and is it relevant to your portfolio? Let's check it out. All right, modern portfolio theory is a collection of, uh, of, of academic research and knowledge that really elevates the portfolio as the centerpiece of the, uh, of the investment process. It really stems back to a paper and then a book written by Nobel laureate Harry Markowitz. In 1952, he published a book called Portfolio Selection. And in that book, he defined and, and you know, brought, brought to bear a process called mean variance portfolio optimization. So in a mean variance optimized portfolio, you're optimizing the mean return, all right, your, your predicted return and variance. You could substitute standard deviation or basically your risk. So you're trying to maximize your returns and minimize your risk and construct the best possible portfolio doing so. And what it does is it uses diversification of all the assets inside that portfolio to help it achieve that portfolio optimization. And once you've built a portfolio that's optimized, that portfolio is said to be efficient. All right, so let's check it out graphically. It makes a lot of sense. Here in this framework, we've got our x-axis is returns. All right, our y-axis is risk. And over here, risk is higher, risk is lower. And on the return side, towards the origin is lower returns and up high is higher returns. So where do you want to be on the spectrum, right? You want to be up high over here. You want to have the highest return and the lowest risk. So all these are just different investments that uh, are, are graphed on their basis of risk adjusted or risk and return. This could be historical or it, it could be the, the product of, of some kind of you know, prediction systems. Um, they're, they're all over the board. Most computer models end up using historical stuff. Um, you know, we happen to use historical stuff as one of the, the inputs and then kind of um, you use a bunch of you know, intelligence and techniques to uh, shape them to be more forward looking. But at the end of the day, um, these investments combine to offer an array of different portfolios that give us a free lunch of diversification. And that, you can see it using the Efficient Frontier. So the Efficient Frontier is an arc. It looks a lot something like this. And you can see um, that this arc extends out further in the direction that we want to go than any of the individual assets do. So what it's telling us is for any spot on the sufficient frontier, this is really combined a combination of you know x number of portfolios, whether it's you know ten, a hundred, or, or five thousand. There's just different portfolios that vary in the amounts that are allocated to each of those individual investments that create a new portfolio uh, that puts it on this frontier. And the gap that you see here between the efficient frontier and that asset. Is, is a function of the benefit that diversification provides to that portfolio. So can we in, make a, a, a portfolio strategy that gives us a better risk adjusted return than our single best uh, investment? Yeah, yeah, we can. Okay, um, so the way this works is each of these different assets, obviously we're graphing them on the basis of their return and their risk, but these assets also have these different interrelationships with each other. And we usually measure that through a correlation. All right, a correlation goes from, from negative one to positive one. Negative one is a perfect negative correlation. Positive one, perfect positive correlation. And a zero correlation means that they don't relate to each other. They're, they're unrelated, they're uncorrelated. In investments, we hope to find investments that are uncorrelated or less correlated or ideally negatively correlated, although there's not that many of those out there. But let's say this is investment A, this is investment B, 
And we can combine investment A and B in these different ratios because of the uh, correlation between them that provide these portfolios that are they're just, just better, okay? We're getting a, a better risk-adjusted return. So by doing so, and then instead of just combining any two assets, combining all of the assets, Markowitz invented a, a, a search parameter that, that uses a quadratic optimization to search for the combinations of, these, of the weights assigned to any of these assets to, to maximize those portfolios. And then we graph the outputs of those on this efficient frontier. So no matter what kind of an investment strategy you follow, there really seems to be no reason why you wouldn't want to benefit from this. It really is like the free lunch of diversification. And even if you can't improve your returns, you can improve your risk. Uh, the Efficient Frontier is very useful for uh, a lot of the, the middle part of this spectrum. And we can dive into the, some of the, the fallibilities and deficiencies of it in the next video. So, if, uh, if you're an investor, strongly encourage you to really, um, really take on that portfolio level thinking and that portfolio first approach. And that's uh, also a, a really a hallmark of being a professional investor. So it's one of the things that, um, that traders really sometimes struggle with is uh, you know, thinking, in, thinking of all these different positions, but now think about how those, all those positions come together and create you know, a more efficient portfolio. So sometimes the gains on this can be small, sometimes the gains can be big, depending on those interrelationships. So we're always looking for assets that have lower negative correlation, and that's gonna make these gains bigger, making that diversification free lunch have um, you know, more bang for our buck. All right, I'll see you in the next video where we're gonna get into some of the fallibilities on efficient portfolios and modern portfolio theory. Thanks.